Okay, so I'm super excited right now. I'm not talking too loud though, because it's like 12.30 at night. But this uh, chair, the C500, I swapped in my 120 amp controller that I had, copied over the software, worked just fine. This thing actually has power now to climb hills. And the reason I actually got stuck on that easy lock bracket in the garage yesterday was because the thing did not have enough power to crawl over that bump. Now I can nudge the tires right up against it, hit the joystick forward, and it just crawls right over. No problem at all. So yeah, there is a huge difference between a crappy 90 amp controller and one of the good 120 amp ones. I mean, if you're not getting enough power to the motors, they're just not gonna work right. I brought my uh, infrared thermometer out to the garage with me so I could check and make sure the controller wasn't getting too hot, the wiring wasn't getting too hot, motors, it, it was all fine. Actually, as I moved, well, I have the covers off of it right now. So as I moved, I think the wind probably helped cool it. But as I was climbing the hills in the garage, the temperature now on the the temperature on the controller never even got above 70 degrees, which is awesome. I drove it around with all the covers off, uh, so I'd be able to check the temperature of the controller down here, make sure the wiring was okay and whatnot. But now that we know we're good, um, I can go ahead and put all this back together. Okay, we're all put back together now and ready to rock and roll. Well, just kind of a quick little project this morning. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that I was trying to figure out exactly how fast this chair moves. And I've got a radar gun somewhere. I haven't seen it since I moved a couple of years ago. It's probably in the back of a storage unit. But after I posted yesterday's video, I got an email from someone in France and he was like, hey, just use your camera and a piece of tape. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Essentially the concept is you put a marker on your tire and then film it for a certain amount of time, then go back to the video and basically count the revolutions in slow speed. The uh, little marker or the piece of tape on the tire allows you to do that. And then you do it for a very specific amount of time. Then you can do math for the rest of it to figure out how fast you're going tire diameter, blah, blah, all that. But if we know RPM, we can figure out speed, which is pretty simple. And I was just kind of guesstimating, the chair has a speedometer on it, but it only works based on what I tell it. So I'm pretty sure these are 7.5 mile an hour motors. So I just told the controller, hey, it's 7.5. And then it uses its magic fake telemetry software to extrapolate how fast it thinks it's going, which is kind of weird because you have two tires and it kind of averages them based on the amount of current it's putting out and the voltage drop. It, it, it's stupid. It's not very accurate. But uh, I think we can take care of this real easily. I'm going to grab some electrical tape and I'm going to get out my phone gimbal and we're going to mount up the iPod touch. I think should be sufficient for what we're doing. All right, let me get this all set up and then we will continue outside. All right, the iPod Touch is too small to fit in the clamp on this thing. Um, all right, I found a case that I can put the iPod Touch into. And now it should be thick enough to fit in this thing. Ah, yes, perfect. There we go. Got to balance this out. All right, and then power this thing up. Ah, there we go. All right, I think we should be good. Let's get this show on the road. And I've got a piece of yellow electrical tape. We'll go ahead and put that on here as a marker. And that should be a nice contrasting color we'll be able to see on the video. And basically all we do is flip the camera all the way down like so. And then we'll be able to film What's going on on this tire? I do believe that was successful. Um, I kind of ran out of real estate and the roof of the garage has a slight uphill slope and then a downhill slope. I'm hoping that overall the average between the two will give us the data we need. Realistically though, I need a longer flat open stretch of pavement that you know, doesn't have any hills up and down. So we're gonna try this and see if it works. And then if not, we'll go over to a parking lot or something. The other nice thing about using an iPod Touch, I do all my video editing on an iMac. 
And to get footage from an iPod Touch onto a Mac is really easy. You just use their AirDrop function. So you select all the clips you want, hit send, and then next. Oh, dang it. This iPod's old enough, it doesn't have AirDrop. Oh wait, no, there it is, sweet. Sending. Then they will magically transfer over to this computer via an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. It's usually pretty quick, this is a slow iPod. Um, but normally, transferring files like this just takes a few seconds. Then we just grab our footage here and pull it into this ultra fancy editor known as iMovie. And now we can analyze our clips. What I'm gonna do here is trim this clip down so I know when we're actually at full speed and I can do that by listening to the audio. Okay, that's about full speed right there. So we'll just go ahead and trim that. And then our slow down over here ends right about there. And now we're left with an 18 second clip. Huh. So I can do this over 15 seconds. I would prefer to do 30 seconds, but I'm gonna trim this down so it's exactly 15 seconds. I'm gonna take a little bit off the end, or the beginning and a little bit off the end, because we're trying to get an average here. I think it's right here is the crest of the garage where it starts going downhill. Yeah, that little bump right there you can see, right there. So we'll put a marker here, and then I'll just pull a little bit off the beginning and the end until we have an exactly 15 second clip. Okay, there we go. So we got a 15 second clip now, and what I'm gonna do is, we know it's 15 seconds, so I'm gonna slow this down to much more manageable speed like say, maybe 30 seconds, let's see here. Two, three, four, okay, that's manageable. So now, I'll watch this for 30 seconds and count how many times this piece of tape passes the ground right here. 25, 26, 27, 43, 40, 43.7, we'll say that is revolutions. Now we can do some math. All right, 43.7 revolutions in 15 seconds uh, times four, we're doing 174.8 RPM. Now, we need to take the diameter of our tire and we can calculate that into feet per second, or wait, diameter, feet per second, miles per hour, I don't know, something. I need to measure my tire. I'm using this wireless charger as sort of a ghetto straight edge. All right, so we are 13 inches in diameter. Um, I know this makes a difference in the calculation, but while I'm sitting in the chair, that's as close as I can get. I'll run the math, and then when I get back into my other chair, I'll measure the tires again, and just make sure there isn't a very fine adjustment we need to make in the math. All right, we're gonna use this little clunky online calculator here. 174.8 RPM gear ratio is one to one. Tire diameter, 13. 6.76 miles an hour. Um, it looks like we're right at about seven miles an hour. Now we are going up a hill and that's kind of averaging, but we need to do this a little bit more accurately, I think. 15 seconds. Let me think about this a little bit and I might run out to a parking lot that is big enough for me to actually get a longer video that's flat and figure out exactly how many RPM we're getting. I just measured these tires and they're actually 13.5 inches in diameter. So if we plug that data back into our calculator here, that gives us 174.8 RPM, gear ratio one to one, tire diameter 13.5. Our speed is 7.02 miles an hour. I would assume that 0.02 is our margin of error for my tire diameter and my ghetto calculation of that being 0 0.7, 0 0.75 would be here maybe, that's about three quarters of a revolution. Part of that was uphill, part of it was downhill. And the way this chair works with the controller and the motors is it does not proportionally go slower uphill than it goes faster downhill. It's a slightly off angle arc. 
So we need to find a flat place and do this again. And that might get us our extra half mile an hour. All right, we found ourselves a nice open parking lot out here that seems to be pretty level. So let's run the numbers again and see what we get. Oh, and also, I switched the uh, marker. I switched the marker over to this other side because trying to control the chair and film on the same side was a little bit difficult. So let's see how this works. I just used my phone to film the second test. It's just easier than trying to use the gimbal and I mean, it works good enough. Now on these motors, they say it's up to 7.5. And it's interesting, I swapped out the controller in this chair last night. One thing I did notice now is on this joystick with the new controller installed, it doesn't actually go all the way up to 7.5 miles an hour. Because with the old controller, it would hit 7.5, 7.6. This one on the screen tops out at like 7.3 is the highest I've ever seen it. Now, I don't know if that's just a calibration error or something like that, but I am tempted to throw the old controller back in here and run another test just to see if there is actually a difference. But according to this, 7.2, this says 7.3, 7.4. Uh, we're, we're reasonably close, I think, here. Regardless, we're above seven miles an hour, which is good. Uh, 7.5 would be even better. Um, but I think this will take a little bit more investigation. And eventually it would be cool to get the radar gun and actually independently verify all this. <laughs> out what was going on and why the display on this joystick was telling me I was going slower. It's because I was going slower. I've been running around with the laptop connected and the uh, programming dongle here and I forgot to do one thing when I swapped the controller over and that's recalibrate the joystick. Anytime you switch any equipment, even update the software on your chair, you have to recalibrate the joystick because the calibration is actually held in the joystick itself and it has to be synced to the main controller. So if the two of them are not quite in sync, it'll default to the lower one, which means it was topping out at 7.3 miles an hour. I recalibrated it and now we're at 7.5 or 7.6, which means I'm gonna have to do the testing all over again. Um, and now it's raining outside. I think what I'm gonna do, it's three o'clock, so it shouldn't be too busy yet, but I'm gonna go into the parking garage and I'm gonna do this downhill. So we'll know what our absolute maximum speed is when gravity is not a factor. Obviously it's gonna skew the results in my favor a little bit, but hey, you know, this isn't really science anyways. I'm just trying to inflate the numbers as much as possible. So we'll go ahead and do it that way and then we'll rerun all these numbers again. It's kind of funny, this, this was gonna be a real quick video, but I think it's turned into an entire episode. <laughs> We have now completed the filming again, uh, going downhill at full speed, and also uphill, just for no reason. The thing is, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is okay, I'm kinda cheating going downhill, but all the paperwork says up to 7.5 miles an hour, which in the real world we know means not 7.5. So we're gonna give it the best possible chance of getting to that speed. Uh, let me load this into the computer, and let's see what we get. We ran into a little bit of trouble here. Going downhill in the garage, I ran out of real estate long before I could get a 15 second clip. So I took it down to 10 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna try and be as precise as possible here because the shorter the clip, the more margin of error there is or small errors are amplified into bigger ones or something. All right, this worked out almost perfectly. This is our starting frame. You can see where the mark is there. And this is our ending frame. And it's almost in the same position, which is about as perfect as it can be. I'm pretty sure I just said it was 33, but I forgot, so I'm gonna have to count it again. Okay, so we had 33 revolutions times six blocks of 10 seconds per minute. That gives us, woo, 198 RPM. That's substantially better. Okay, 
Uh, 198 RPM, back to our calculator. I should probably be using screen capture for this, but whatever. Wait, what did I just say? Oh yeah, 198. So, 198, gear ratio of one to one, tire diameter of 13.5, and boom, 7.96 miles an hour downhill. That's what I consider results. Um, so assuming it was 7.5 normally, we're going downhill, so that would account for the extra half a mile an hour probably. Uh, I also did this going uphill, so let me do the calculations now going uphill on the same slope with the new calibration on the joystick that is allowing the controller to go maximum speed. All right, going uphill, we had 28 revolutions times six blocks of 10 seconds in a minute, 168 RPM. That's actually pretty impressive because we're pretty close to what we were before we calibrated. So, gear ratio one to one, 13.5 tire diameter. That's 6.75 miles an hour. Now six and three quarter miles an hour going uphill is actually really good. This chair is heavy, I don't know what it weighs, but we were going up a pretty decent slope. Most power chairs, I think they rate the hill climbing capability at around three to five percent grade. And this, I haven't measured it, but it's easily like three or five percent. So yeah, um, this chair is definitely faster than it was with the old motors. And the rule is make sure you calibrate everything when you make changes. Otherwise your data will be all screwy. 